Hello there! My name is Adrian Hotkowski and I have a pleasure to show you the first episode of our new series called Microsoft Fabric 101. During this series we would like to show you all the functionalities of Microsoft Fabric that are needed to start working with it. In the first episode I would like to show you how to enable Microsoft Fabric on your tenant. As you can see we are in the Power BI portal and you can ask yourself if Fabric is enabled or not. Uh, the easiest check that you can perform is to go to the um, bottom left corner and if you see the switcher between different experiences like Power BI, Data Engineering and so on and so forth, uh, then it means that Fabric is enabled for you. If, if the switcher is not available, it means Fabric is disabled or you don't have access to any workspace attached to the fabric capacity. Uh, you can enable fabric on two different levels, on the tenant level and on the capacity level. I would like to show you both ways how to enable it. We'll start with the tenant. Before we will go to the tenant settings, uh, I would like to highlight that you have to have proper privileges. You have to be Microsoft 365 Global Admin, Power Platform Admin, or Fabric Admin. So ensure that you have proper, proper privileges before trying to enable it. Uh, to go to the tenant settings, you need to click those settings button and click admin portal. Here under tenant settings, you can see entire set of settings available for you to establish proper Microsoft Fabric environment. For us, for this video, the most important one is users can create fabric items. Here on the tenant level, you can enable or disable it. As you can see right now, for my tenant is disabled. It means by, that by default, no one can create fabric items. Of course, it is possible that capacity on the capacity level, admin of capacity can override tenant settings, but uh, we'll talk about it in a minute. Right now, let's enable it. And as you can see, you can enable it for entire organization or for specific security groups. If you will enable it for entire organization, you can also select accept specific security groups. It means that uh, entire organization will um, can create fabric items but you can specify specific security groups where Fabric will be disabled. For what you need something like that. Let's say you have external consultants or external employees that you don't want to create Fabric items. You can group those uh, people into one Microsoft Entra group, security group, and add it here. So it means they will not be able to perform any Fabric related activities. Okay, good. So right now, I enabled it and I need to click apply. As you can see on this uh, pop-up, it can take up to 15 minutes uh, to take an effect. I will try to refresh my browser, maybe it will be enabled faster. Okay, as you can see in the bottom left corner, I have a switcher that was not available previously, so I can click it and I have switcher between different fabric um, experiences power bi data factory and etc uh, i can go also to workspaces and i can go to the workspace that i created previously that is attached to the fabric capacity and now when i will cl click new more options i should see uh, many different items that I can create, like houses, notebooks, and so on and so forth, not only Power BI related items, so it means Fabric is enabled for me. Okay, so that's easy. Let's go to the capacity settings and see what we can set up there. Uh, capacity, capacity settings are also available in admin portal, so let's go there. And uh, under capacity settings, 
I have uh, all the available capacities for me. So Power BI Premium, Embedded, Trial, Fabric Capacity. Trial is also connected to the Fabric because it's a Fabric Trial. I will talk about it in the future episodes. Right now, let's go to the Fabric Capacity. Here, you should see all the capacities that are available in your tenant. Uh, those capacities are not created here. They are created in Azure portal, let's say. So um, I will create in the next episode a new capacity for you to show you how to create it from the graphical interface in the portal, Azure portal, and also from the Terraform script. For now, I have one capacity that is active. It's not passed, so I can click it. And here under delegated tenant settings, I see very similar set of settings that I saw on the tenant level. So under user can create fabric items. I can override default tenant setting or, or keep it like it is. So I will override it and let's say I can disable it or disable it for specific groups, enable it for specific groups. I have a possibility to do it. Of course, to do it, I have to be capacity admin, of course. Uh, you can ask why we need something like that. Why I can uh, override something that is set on the tenant settings. Uh, it's because of governance. Sometimes we have situations that organization have a lot of capacities and some of them are used for fabric. Some of them are used only for Power BI and Fabric is not allowed for it. So in such cases, we can just disable or enable um, Fabric you know, for specific capacity. So you can imagine situation that you have two capacities and you can enable Fabric on one and enable only Power or disable Fabric on another because this another capacity is used only for reporting, let's say in a standard way using import mode or direct query mode in Power BI. That's all for now. Uh, in the next episode, as I said, I will show you how to create fabric capacity in Azure portal and using Terraform scripts. So thank you very much and talk to you later.